Here is a 2024 Toyota Prius Limited in Reservoir Blue. Last year, we got a full refresh, which increased us by up to 60% in horsepower, up to 16% in torque, 20% better with the regenerative braking system and 26% quicker on the zero to 60. With the new TNGAC platform, it has more of a wide stance. The roof line is lowered by two inches, helping with the lower center of gravity and lowering the weight so it's more dynamic. The front occupants will sit a little bit lower, but it's gonna be a little bit more playful. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over all the details, some pros and cons, the problem that I have and comparable rivals. All trims received by LED headlights and daytime runnings that integrate into the top part of the grill with a standard active grill shutter. The XLE trim and limited will receive rain sensing wipers. LE doesn't receive it. Front parking sensors and an optional 360 degree reverse camera will only be on the limited trim. Gloss black elements is going to surround the satin aluminum and I like the Japanese design. They kept their styling true to their line. And underneath the hood is the reborn of the hybrid. It's a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder that produces 194 horsepower for the front wheel drive model that we're showing. When you option all wheel drive, it's 196 horsepower that will drop the zero to 60 to seven seconds. You're going to be achieving 52 MPGs for the highway, 52 MPGs for the city, which when I'm thinking combustion engine and it's not a plug in, this is the best in its class compared to Honda or Hyundai. When you go limited trim, you get these 19 inch wheels as well as the XLE. 17 inch comes standard gloss black elements around the fenders. The lower skirt gets a little bit more aggressive for the hatchback and updating the safety last year with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 with pre-collision. And when you tick the box for the all wheel drive, you get an increase of 50% power to the rear. Last generation torque was at 41. This year and last year is at 62. Horsepower last was at seven. Now you're at 40. So it's a faster car and it's still sipping fuel. LED tail lights, gloss black trim on the trunk lid and we get Easter eggs. So the Prius is going to be on the rear window and the front windscreen. The lower gets the gloss black elements, reverse Sensors with the reverse camera is standard, and I'm not expecting to see exhaust outlets, even though this is 26% faster than the prior gen. Power liftgate going into 20.3 cubic feet. The LE will be the most at 23.8 cubic feet. Hybrid reborn badging. You're gonna have some storage on the side and underneath because there's no spare tire you receive compartments. Once you get the privacy cover off, it just collapses like this, so that way it optimizes space. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split. Interior space for all of the occupants is over 91 cubic feet. Power lift gate is only on the limited trim because it's a hatch, you got a wider opening. The bumpers will sit up a little bit more so because of the design. Let's go. Ten-way power seat adjustment, memory for the driver, heated, ventilated front seats because of the limited trim. When you get into the XLE, you can get heated front seats. Headroom and leg room. The Prius will have a lot of interior space, ambient lighting that's going to brush underneath the aluminum inlays. JBL sound system, you get eight speakers, two digital readers with a 12.3 for the infotainment, we have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM streaming, Bluetooth audio, put it into reverse. With a reverse camera, the trajectory will not expand out, and you can option a 360 degree reverse camera as well as an optional digital rear view mirror. Standard climate control, six total USB-C ports, 12 volt, Underneath here is a hidden storage compartment and the key fob for the new Prius. Gloss black elements are going to surround everything. Wireless charging pad, driving mode select, which when you go into the driver cluster, we now have a digital reader. So you have a custom, which when you click onto the settings here, you can tailor this as normal or sport derived. Going back into that gauge cluster, you have sport, normal, eco, and you can go through an array of information, including different safety settings for the driver. It's gonna be more of a retro setup, soft tech, 
steering wheel, it's heated, multi-function adaptive cruise control lane keep assist. Coming back, it's gonna be soft. It opens up into a long storage pocket with some more USB ports, a moon roof, and the door and dashboard integrating together. It's gonna to be more of an everyday material up top, software it needs to be, one touch up and down for all the windows with a medium sized storage pocket. Back seat, headroom isn't bad because it's carved out for you and you have a moon roof for yourself. No storage behind the driver's seat, but you will receive it behind the passenger seat. Two more USB ports, optional heated rear seats, armrests with cup holders. The door is going to have the same material that's found in the front, software it needs to be, with a smaller storage pocket that you can fit a flask. Sliding into the center, the floor is nearly flat, but you will be sharing some feet space. Button shoulder space isn't compromised too bad for the width of the vehicle. Headroom becomes a little bit more tight for somebody that's over six foot tall. 194 horsepower with the front wheel drive. We're gonna start off with turn radius and showing you that 26% increase. It's about two lanes. We got it in sport mode. Here we go. Now I get it. It's a Prius. We're not taking it on the track, but you can do this and still achieve 52 MPGs or at least near 50 mpgs for the city and highway which is amazing because when you're looking at the prior gen almost 10 seconds to zero to 60 it wasn't by any means a fun vehicle and the technology was lacking we didn't have a gauge cluster we don't have the upgraded eight speaker jbl but we get that now we're also getting that lower roof line by two inches so it looks sleek on the exterior the platform makes it more wide it's less weight and it's a little bit more rigid. So it still has a Capose ride, even with 19 inch wheels, but it has a little bit more dynamics for taking some corners and bins. Now, obviously you're not gonna go crazy. This is more of an everyday drive. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons and starting off with the pros. When you go to the XLE, that's the sweet spot. The limited, you get pretty much everything, but you still have to option things. So I like that you have the capabilities that it unlocks pretty much everything you would normally feature, but I dislike that you have to option a couple of features because when you're going that trim opposed to the XLE, I would like to see a standard digital rear view mirror. Even though there's not that many blind spots in the rear, the windows are sleek on the exterior, but they're large enough on the interior. I like the seat setting to this better than the prior gen. And to show you what I mean by it's a little bit more rigid, you can take a little bit of the bends and this is with the 19 inch wheels. It's a playful vehicle. I like that they implemented a gauge cluster because I'm not so for that Tesla where I'm looking in the center. Plus we have, hey, Toyota. They've updated the technology, the safety. We have six USB ports throughout the interior of the cabin. You can option heated rear seats when you're in the limited trim. And you're not gonna hear that engine that much unless you're really going on it. And that's gonna take me to the cons in which starts into the rear. When you go XLE or limited, you actually lose cargo capacity. Then you're not receiving a spare tire on the trims in which there's room underneath it. Only a single climate control instead of a dual climate control that is standard across all trims. So there's just some things that they should touch up because the price will increase to around 40 grand when you start optioning features in which when you go into the XLE, you can option a glass roof. But by the time you start optioning features on the XLE, you might as well go to the limited trim. That will take me to the big problem that I have. Even though everything has increased to make it better, this should have been the last gen, meaning the ride comfort, the gauge cluster, the increase in horsepower and torque faster zero to 60s in the fuel consumption. Also, you'll have some little hiccups with the Hey Toyota. It may work, it may not. So the interface is good, but it seems like the technology is still kind of catching up to it in which sometimes the Bluetooth device will echo whenever you're using it because of the way the cabin is designed. So just a few things that they could polish, but when I'm considering anybody in a rival perspective, this is hands down going to be the best hybrid, not just with value, but MPGs, quicker, 
and styling. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gandalf Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Prius Limited for our car review.